Hi, I'm Gary Holtz. I'm a backend engineer for the Create team and uh, one of the maintainers of the GitLab CLI application. We've had some interest in supporting the concept of stacked diffs in the CLI, and I wanted to show you what we were thinking as far as implementation. Uh, if you don't know what stacked diffs are, uh, there is a good overview of them in this article on the Pragmatic Engineer. Uh, you can just Google stacked diffs and why you should know about them, or just bug me on Slack and I'll send you the link. Um, anyway, this is a quick overview of what we were thinking. Our version of stack diffs will be used with the subcommand stack in the glab tool. So we'll have glab and then stack. Uh, we'd first start with a basic branch, which we're already on. So just say git checkout main. And then we would use the command stack new and then uh, a feature name. So we'll say GitLab API changes. We're using that feature, so it's actually going to create a directory inside our Git refs folder called stack diffs. And then after that, it'll make another directory with the name of the feature. So GitLab API changes. Uh, if we want to see an example, we could do, um, make a file here. And the idea with stack diffs is that's it. We've made a code change. We want to submit the smallest possible change for review. Uh, the next command we would do then is glab stack save, and then a message added some code. And under the hood, that will take a SHA-1 of information from the commit. So we'd have the title, the author, and the time. To show you what I mean by that, we could do an actual commit. Um, and then we see the author, the time, date, and then the commit message. So that would be rolled up into a SHA-1 and used to create a new branch. Uh, the format for that would be username, dash feature, dash, and then whatever the SHA is. So We'll say that this was uh, Gary H GitLab API changes, and then we'll put in a random SHA. Did submit that commit as a merge request now or keep making changes in adding additional uh, stacks. So if we made another change, we would do something like glab branch save, another cool feature uh, with the M tag, sorry. And that would create something like in the same format here, but with a different SHA. In addition to making a new branch, uh, GLab will also update the metadata in our stack diff directory too. So if we want to take a look inside that folder and we'll go to the first SHA we made and see <clears throat> there is a file with three attributes kind of in a JSON format. So we have previous, next, and uh, MR. So if you've worked with linked lists before, this probably looks a little familiar. The next is going to be pointing to our next SHA that we generated. And if we go to the next file, we have one that's pointing to the previous one. And since there's not one after this, it's nil. And since there's not one before this, it's nil. Uh, we also don't have any merge request links yet because we haven't done a sync. To a sync, we could go back to the command line and type glab stack sync, and that's going to push all of our branches and make merge requests for them. Uh, in addition, they're also linked. So our first merge request is going to be targeting the main branch, um, but the second merge request will be targeting that first merge request. So that way we're building off our code each time. <clears throat> this would also go into the metadata and uh, update the MR attribute and all those files. That's basically the normal workflow. Uh, the other use would be to go back to a previous branch if you need to change something for a code review. Uh, you could do that by navigating the stack, 
by doing glab stack list and picking the change name from a fuzzy finder, or you could use some kind of directional keywords like glab stack up will go up the stack, glab stack down goes down, or go to the first item in the stack or the last item. And you'll be able to see where you are at any point by doing glab stack status. Uh, once you're back at the branch you wanted to change for uh, code review, you can add some code and use the amend command, which will be glab stack amend. And then that will amend the commit and you can do another glab stack sync and it will take care of amending and force pushing to the remote. Uh, I think that's most of it. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to at me or say something in Slack. Uh, yeah, thanks.